AKA Bullets YouTube channel. Hurry up, now tell us why you're here. Kurt Busch tire will start at pole position with Jeff Gravett to his outside. Row 2 has the Rocket Ryan Newcar and Dale Earnhardt Jr. to his outside. Row 3 has Kyle Busch tire, the mean yellow car, and Joey Logierno. Row 4 has Greg Beeple and Mark Carton, who has failed to win multiple championships. Row 5 has Tony Gaswort, the 2002 Piston Cup Champion, and Juan Pablo Montoya. Row 6 has Matt Carseth, the 2003 Piston Cup Champion, and his teammate Carl Edwards. Row 7 has Clint Bocar and Cal Weathers, the 2008 Piston Cup Champion. Row 8 has Lightning McQueen, 3-time Piston Cup Champion, and Brad Karzlowski, who's outside. Row 9 has Bobby Swift and Maury Clutchburn to his outside. Row 10 has Casey Corner and Jimmy Cables, who looks really good in practice. Row 11 has David Rudikar and Jeff Burnton to his outside. I wonder if either of them will do anything. Row 12 has Rex Reveler, who sings a song when he wins a race, and Jamie McCarry to his outside. Row 13 has Todd Marcus and Brick Yardley, the 2008 Florida 500 winner. Row 14 is Denny Carlin and Ernie Gerson, who started from this position last race. Row 15 is Bobby Cabani and Reb Meeker to his outside in his second ever start. Row 16 has Brian Vickars and Brick Hicks. What are they doing back here? Row 17 is TG Castleman and Kevin Carvick. What are you doing back here? Row 18 is Martin Carks Jr. and Chip Gearings, who actually surprisingly qualifies. Row 19 has Jack DePost and Phil Texan to his outside. Row 20 has Chad Motorgas and AJ Carmendinger, neither of which qualified last race. Row 21 has Floyd Movilhill and Mike Yankee Jr., hoping not to crash, and starting in 43rd is unfortunately... Chuck Hicks! Why couldn't Speedy Comet qualify instead? Well, these seven cars, along with many others, failed to qualify for this race. Now into the race. Kurt Busch Tire would lead for the first lap, but unfortunately, he'd lose the lead before lap two to Jeff Corvette, who would lead for a full 50 laps, but Chick attempted to wreck Mike Yankee Jr., but ended up wrecking both himself and Mike Yankee Jr., unfortunately. Greg Beeple would take the lead on lap 51, leading until lap 56, but right over the line, Lightning McQueen would take the lead on lap 57, leading until lap 60, but then Jeff Corvette would be back in the lead, leading for 23 more laps, before Lightning McQueen would be back in the lead once more, leading until lap 90, where Matt Karzath would take the lead from him. He'd lead until lap 98, where Jeff Corvette would be back in the lead, leading until lap 110 where Jimmy Cables would take the lead from him. He'd lead for four laps before Jeff Corvette is once again back in the lead, leading until lap 160, where Bobby Swift would take the lead from him. He'd only lead on pit cycles, though, because Kevin Carvick would take the lead less than two laps later, leading until lap 163, but unfortunately, Kyle Bushtire would take the lead, leading for just two laps, but then Tony Gaswood would take the lead from him leading another two laps before Jeff Corvette would retake the lead, leading until lap 213, where Kevin Carvick would be back in the lead for two laps, before Tony Gaswort would take the lead from him. He'd lead for five laps before Jeff Corvette is once again back in the lead, leading for 22 laps before Clint Bocar would take the lead from him, leading for three laps before, you guessed it, Jeff Corvette would be back in the lead, leading until lap 250, where Lightning McQueen would once again take the lead, leading all the way until lap 282. Unfortunately, Kyle Busch Tire was 23rd as of lap 276, where he wrecks Cal Weathers, Floyd Movilhill, and Rep Meeker. Ooh, I mean yellow car! And the king, of course, has this to say. Bobby Swift would take the lead on lap 282, leading until lap 298, where Ernie Gerson would surprisingly take the lead, leading for 46 laps, but Phil Tankson would take the lead on lap 344. Why? 
Kyle Busch tire is second as of lap 276. Where he went? Wait, what? Phil Texan is not out. Hooray! And here is what Phil Texan had to say. The mean yellow car's brother, Kurt, would take the lead after the restart. But on lap 352, Lightning McQueen would take the lead from him. Leading until lap 367, where Phil Texan would take the lead for three laps. But... Denny Carlin would take the lead on lap 370, leading for 18 laps before Lightning McQueen would briefly take the lead. In the same lap, Denny Carlin would retake the lead, leading until the checkered flag to win the 2010 Las Vegas 400. Lightning McQueen would finish second this race, and he only lost by nine feet. Kevin Carvick would finish third, Jeff Corvette fourth, and Phil Tankson rounding out the top five. And here is the top 20 of the race with Ernie Gearson getting a top 10 and Joey Laguerno missing out. Oh, I'm not done yet. Here is the rest of the standings for the race. Bobby Cabani almost got lapped. And here is the top 20 in points with Lightning McQueen in the lead with 355 points. Remember to press the notifications button which goes ring 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 after you press it. And Lightning strikes back! And that's as if you subscribed of course. And thank you for watching this entire video! At least the mean green car finished last! But the third race of the 2010 Piston Cup season should be coming out very soon, within the next week. Let's hope the mean green car doesn't qualify for this race. Oh wait, it's his home track. Oh no! Unfortunately, the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine is still going on. At this time, around one-fifth of Ukraine's land is controlled by Russia, led by the tyrannical Vladimir Putin. We must continue to stand in support of Ukraine in their fight against Putin, and that... Ukraine will be able to see peace once again. Vladimir Putin, there is no room for your tyranny in Ukraine. The Ukrainians deserve freedom and peace, just like everyone else. Slava Ukraini! Heroyam Slava!